another commentary channel. What is the worst fear you have ever had in your life? I'd be willing to guess that it wasn't just one, it was 10, 20, maybe 30 in the same sitting. Because the beers we're about to talk about, nobody really drinks them for fun. People drink them because they are hungover and they desperately need to feel better, or it's just because it's alcohol and beer. Get drunk. I, I don't think I don't think there's anybody, anybody that drinks these for fun. Well, strangely enough, one of the first beers on here is my favorite beer. I barely drink any alcohol. Maybe like once every six months. No kidding. So, uh, this is in no particular order. Bruh. I actually love this beer. It's the Bud Light Chilada. I don't know what it is, but I love that tomato juice. I feel like I'm drinking a V8. I feel like I'm I'm doing something good for myself. And then I found out it has clams in it. And let me just read it. This beer is a combination of Bud Light, tomato juice, and clams. It has clams in it. It literally has clams in it. Flamato, chelada, flamato, chelada, tomato, tomato. And while this may sound refreshing and unique, the taste has been widely criticized as just being a bad Bloody Mary, which it is. It's, it's bad, but I like it because I'm trashy. I like that. The tomato and clam flavors, they overpower the beer. Maybe that's why I like it, because I don't like beer. Again, I don't drink, so this probably is the number 10 worst beer of all time. Coming up next, we have the Cave Creek Chili Beer. Now, I'm not familiar with this one, but it sounds absolutely terrible because the first of all the the company cave creek uh i couldn't think of a creek that i'd like to get in less and i couldn't think of a cave that i'd like to get in less a cave without running water uh, maybe okay and a creek that's not inside a cave sounds very inviting the two of them together sounds like a nightmare and they have made a terrible beer it's infused with chili peppers it is widely panned for its lack of subtlety in the flavors seeing as how most of the flavor is chili. Uh, people complain that the chili peppers overpower the beer, um, and they're right. Some people may enjoy this spicy kick, but they're probably better off just drinking very bad whiskey or very bad vodka. Coming up next is Michelob Ultra. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever it's a hot, sunny day and we have nothing else to drink, and someone just so happens to come along and offer me Michelob Ultras for free, I will still turn them down because they taste terrible. Michelob Ultra, Michelob, if you're watching this, you're terrible. You are terrible. You are the off-brand, off-brand socks that are too thin, and you can't, they, it, you are the socks that make your feet slip around in the shoes. You understand, Michelob? You're terrible. You're just terrible, okay? And I bet you the great-grandfather that founded Michelob beer is, is literally looking down on you and saying whatever language he spoke, he's like, shame on you. Shame on you, grandson. You shouldn't have inherited shit. You destroyed my legacy by selling water beer to people. Michelob Ultra, you're terrible. Michelob, you're terrible. Stop producing beer. You need to stop producing beer. And I mean this truly, truly, for the betterment of mankind, put it down. Put the distillery keys in the drawer and shut the drawer. We're done with you, Michelob. We're done with you. Coming up next is Natty Light. I don't know if you ever had Natty Light, but that's probably because you have taste. Natty Light is leaps and bounds worse than Michelob. I only roast Michelob because it's a real brand. I don't know what natural light really is, but it's kind of like the waters that uh, Coca-Cola makes. Dasani. Natty Light, see, I grew up skateboarding, okay? And uh, one time a beer truck crashed right near the skate park. Nobody got hurt, but we all ran and grabbed these beers and they were Natty Lights. And I just vividly remember a lot of kids were like, nah. When I say kids, I mean people in their 20s. A lot of them took a sip and were just like, ah, ah. Terrible, terrible water beer. I don't need, it's, it's just like Michelob, dude. It's, it's known for its low price, but its taste has been criticized as being water, soda water, okay? But that's the thing. Natty Light isn't even very carbonated. It has like 0.2% alcohol. No, it's got like 2.8% alcohol or something. That's terrible, okay? With Natty Light, you just, I would rather drink Michelob. That's, that's how bad it is. Natty Light, I have some of my worst memories in my life are because of Natty Light. Because 
I don't drink now, but when I was like in my 20s, I used to drink, okay? And Natty Light was that like, I am depressed. I have nothing going for me. Let me get a 78 pack or whatever the biggest pack they sell Natty Lights in. Let me get 150 of those and drink all of them. I knew this guy, Steve. This is real, dude. It was his favorite beer. And I always thought it was strange because Steve was an interesting dude. Okay, he snowboarded, he skateboarded, he BMXed, and fucking, excuse me, he, he, he dirt biked too, okay? And he loved natural light. Like, he loved natural light. I never understood that guy. We didn't get along. Uh, he seemed like a nice guy, but I just never really gave him a chance at friendship because he, he was so deeply involved with natural light, and I just couldn't see, I couldn't see any sort of, like, real human in there, you know? Just a fucking... Right? You like natural light? Steve, you know who you are. Old English 800. It's a malt liquor known for its high alcohol content and relatively low price, but the taste is too malty, it's too overpowering, and it's just one of those beers, you know like all these craft beer companies? They're coming out with, oh, well, this is a cloven goat's hoof marinade with orange peels on it. Oh, that sounds terrible. That sounds absolutely Terrible. You disgust me. You fucking disgust me. I'm serious. Get that out of here. Old English 800 is like the exact opposite of Natty Light. Natty Light is flavorless. It is an ethereal mist that if you weren't drunk, you would seriously doubt that it was a beverage at all. It tastes less than water does, okay? Old English 800, it tastes like an old man spit in your mouth. And I mean, I mean an old man that was just drinking real malt liquor, took that stuff that's back there in the sinuses and really got it out. And then he, he forcibly held your mouth open and spit directly into your mouth. Not onto like the front of your mouth where you could spit it out, but like back there, right? Ah, old English 800. For me, whenever I drink uh, anything malty like that, but surely this is the worst of the worst with malt. It feels like there's a bunch of like dog hairs on the back of my tongue. I don't know why. At first, for the first 30 minutes, I'm like, eh, I feel good. But then that, that, that come down or whatever you want to call it, I just, I, I feel used, you know? I feel used by that type of beer. I hate it. All right, next on the list is a very obvious one. It's Pabst Blue Ribbon, dude. PBR, give me a break. PBR, forget what I said about natural light. PBR is the all-time, the absolute anti-goat. It is the anti-greatest of all time. It's the worst beer ever. It really is because I, I, I look, I, I'm serious when I say, I don't know if you could qualify this as a beer. It really is that bad. Paps Blue Ribbon, you know, it's like generic medications, okay? I wanted a beer, but you know, it's like when you, when, when you're a kid and you ask your mom for McDonald's, I want McDonald's. Hey, we got McDonald's at home. That's what Pabst Blue Ribbon is for beer. I want to go get beer. Ah, we got beer at home. Pabst Blue Ribbon. Forget everything I said about all the other beers. This is my personal least favorite beer. And I want to reiterate, it's very important to note that it's not even a beer. It is water with bubbles and alcohol in it. And they just, it doesn't have many of those either. There's not much carbonation. There's not much flavor. There's no flavor. There is no flavor. Pabst, Pabst, really. This is real. This is not for the video. Pabst Blue Ribbon. I don't know if you're Anheuser-Busch. I don't know who makes this beer. Please discontinue your product. It is a terrible product. You have done a terrible job producing this product. And I mean that straight from the heart. You've done poorly. You have done poorly producing this product. Remove it from the shelves. Save mankind. And get rid of Pabst Blue Ribbon. Oh, it's not a joke, dude. I want you to pause the video. And I want you to write letters to the company that makes PBR. I'm, I'll wait. All right. Next is Schlitz, a beer that I don't really see much of anymore because uh, it's terrible. It sounds very, si I've never had Schlitz though, but it sounds very similar to PBR and Natty Light. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, it's overly sweet. All right, so it's not like them. It's lacking in character. Man, that is, that is such a succinct way to describe PBR and Natty Light. God damn you. Straight to the pit of hell. PBR and Natty Light, you identical pieces of crap. Uh, Schlitz is, uh, how do you put it? Terrible. It lacks a depth of complexity and it's just watery bubbles with a little bit of alcohol in it. What a shock. All right, Steel Reserve is a overpowering monster. Uh, it tastes like an armpit, a bubbly armpit, uh, and it's got a lot of alcohol 
and I, and I I feel like they're gonna have a class action lawsuit over like stomach diseases. You know what I mean? Like I feel like that beer it, when when you taste that beer, it tastes like a lawsuit to me. You know, people will get illnesses if they continue to drink this all day. You know, what about that guy that just he isn't? Oh, it's just one ibuprofen, and he drinks like nine Steel Reserves, and this is every night. You're gonna get sued, Steel Reserve. Your product is is terrible. I don't know. You know, it's so easy for me to sit in this black chair with no liquid finances, really, to speak of, and talk shit about these huge companies. Uh, the end. It's very easy to sit here and just say, they suck, they suck, they suck. And here's the thing, they do suck, okay? These beers are terrible. Don't think just because they're producing something that they should have your money. These, these beers, oh man. Imagine making a beer that you really like, okay? Imagine brewing it to your specifications, but then someone comes along and waters it down, or they add way too much flavoring and, and way too much alcohol. That's what all these beers are. They're all terrible. All right, second to last on this list will surprise nobody, Tecate. Ah, Tecate is very similar to PBR and Natty Light, but I don't know of any beer that is associated with warm temperatures like Tecate. When I hear the word Tecate, I think warm beer that somebody left on the floor out in the sunlight because nobody values it. Tecate is is a word that may translate to warm in, in its native uh, language. I don't know, you know? Uh, it should colloquially at least mean terrible because it's a terrible beer made for terrible people or people that are just on hard times, right? All the beers on this list, ex-cons are dying to get their hands on them. You know, first thing out of prison, Oh my god, man, I gotta get a PBR, dude. I gotta get literally anything in me. I need to numb myself. That's the people that are buying these beers. And all, all fair, you know, not here to mock anyone, but these beers are the welfare of alcohol. They are the government program for the poor of alcohol. So welfare. I'm just saying it again, you know, just repeating myself. And the last on the list, we have Zima, which is kind of not really a beer at all. More of like a White Claw vibe. Uh, and they discontinued it for a reason. Or uh, they didn't discontinue it, but it's not, it's not seen as much these days because it's terrible. A Zima is kind of like if you took a PBR and put way too many bubbles in it, and then you put like a little bit of lime in there right? It's got flavor, but the flavor is just too artificial, okay? They got that guy that made artificial banana flavor. They got him on their team, and he he didn't respect anybody's, uh, you know, creativity. He just said, he just said, no, we're making these flavors as insane as they can, all right? Ronald Reagan just wrote me a check for a million dollars to make these beers taste terrible. That's what we're doing here, all right? Zima is so bad that I do believe that there's a conspiracy behind it to turn people off of uh, hard seltzers entirely, all right? Looking at you, Reagan, you ghost. All right, well, that was a very cathartic experience for me and a very inaccurate list of the top worst beers, vaguely speaking, in my opinion. I'm sure I got many details wrong. So I am, I am, I am struggling to get engagement. I want you to tell me that I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong in the comments. I, I need you to comment. Do you hear me? Comment on the video and say anything to me. Even if it's very mean, I will take it. Just say it. All right. I'm desperate. Goodbye.